Welcome! In this tutorial, we'll explore Fruity Envelope Controller. With Fruity Envelope Controller, you can use note input to trigger envelopes that automate plugin parameters. Hold on. That sounds familiar. Isn't that exactly what Keyboard Controller does? Technically, yes. But with far more flexibility. To demonstrate, I've linked the Envelope Controller to the Master Filter in Flex. You'll notice as I play notes in Envelope Controller, the cutoff and resonance values change simultaneously. Neat! So, how does this type of automation work? To make this happen, we'll need to link the parameter to Envelope Controller. Right-click the control and select Link to Controller. Envelope Controller will be in the list here. That's interesting. It shows up 8 times. This is because Envelope Controller has 8 independent controller envelopes called Articulators. In this example, to control the cutoff, we'll use Articulator 1. And for the resonance, let's use Articulator 2. Now when I play a note, the target parameters do a little dance. Click on the articulator that's linked to the control to edit the automation. We'll use a default envelope to show the settings. Like keyboard controller, every articulator in envelope controller has a key range that decides which notes are passed to the selected articulator. Set it by clicking and dragging the left or right edge of the note name area. By default, it's set to all notes. To set it to one note, right click in the note name area. Note, only the first articulator envelope is enabled by default. For articulators 2 to 8, you will need to activate the switch here also. This can be a good way to try envelope variations if they are linked to the same control. Cut and paste between them with this menu here and tweak. Then activate each in turn. Besides the main envelope, each articulator also has an LFO and keyboard velocity mod X and Y and random mappings. By default, the articulators are set to bipolar mode, meaning the base level represents a midpoint horizontal line and modulation can be positive, above or negative, below the line. When set to unipolar, the base level is at the bottom of the graph and the top is the maximum output level. Okay, let's get deeper into the all-important main envelope. You can scale its level with the envelope knob, and as we noted, switch it on and off with the button in the lower left corner. If your modulation is not working, check this switch first. The envelope represents control values over time, left to right. So time is on the horizontal axis and control output level on the vertical axis. You can change the grid to be tempo based with the tempo button down here. This means the grid represents beats, so you can time events perfectly to your music. The attack, decay, sustain and release knobs scale the time and level values of marked breakpoints in the envelope. If you have no breakpoints marked, you can use the Decay knob to scale the whole envelope in time. To add points, right-click anywhere in the graph. To delete them, right-click them and select Delete. Or if you need to delete multiple points quickly, click Step Edit mode and right-click and drag over the graph. As an example, let's use all this control to make a fully customizable and accurate sidechain level docking preset. Nice. To set a point as Decay, Sustain or Release, right click it and select the type you want from the menu. The attack segment will always be the time between the first breakpoint and the decay breakpoint. 
you'll notice the sustain option says loop end. If you're inclined, you can select any point to be the loop start point. Now that section of the envelope will loop as soon as the sustain point is reached until the key or note is released. For example, use this to trigger a filter chopping effect. The LFO section works a little like the envelope section. Let's switch it on. Notice, in addition to your traditional LFO parameters down here, it also has an envelope, but only the sustain point is marked. The envelope will scale the output of the LFO over time and hold the scaling at the sustain point until the note is released. You can add this to or subtract this from your envelope using the LFO knob. In the keyboard mapping graph, X represents the incoming note and Y is the output value. To put it simply, it's another way of keyboard tracking a parameter. The mapping graphs are added to the output of the envelope to scale it. Velocity mapping is also pretty straightforward. The x-axis is for the incoming velocity and the y-axis is the output. The xy pad on the front UI sets the input values for the modulation x and y graphs. In addition to spicing up your envelope, you can use these graphs without using an envelope at all if you enable continuous output here. The random mapping lets you add randomness to the output. The vertical axis represents the range of possible random values 0 to 1 when a note is pressed and the horizontal axis position will be randomly chosen. This way, if I wanted it to offset my envelope by 0.25 in exactly 25% of cases, I would do this. So that's Envelope Controller. We know this is a lot to take in at once, but now you know how deep this plugin can be and how to use it to its full potential. As always, there's links to the video segments the Envelope Controller manual page and demo projects used in this tutorial in the video information below. So don't forget to check that out.